Walmart has been looking for a route into South Africa for some time, and now it has made its move. It's buying a 51% stake in MassMart, one of the country's biggest wholesalers, which also owns several store chains, including Game and Builders Warehouse. With 288 stores in 14 other African countries, total sales last year were $7 billion. Africa is seen as the next big growth frontier, and many companies want to be in at the beginning. Consumer spending in the continent as a whole is set to rise from $864 billion in 2008 to $1.4 trillion by 2020. There are now 1 billion people living in Africa, and it's one of the world's fastest growing retail markets. Africa's largest food retailer, South Africa ShopRite, has pioneered expansion outside its borders and operates in 16 countries across the continent. In the past, ShopRite's chairman has been quoted as saying that Walmart is the big gorilla in the retail jungle, yet believes the market is big enough for everyone. I think there's enough business for everybody, and you know we hold the philosophy that business stimulates business, so uh, we don't lose sleep over losing any of our fruit, but we have to protect our patch. The other big food player in South Africa is Pick and Pay with sales of nearly $8 billion. It also has a presence outside its home country, but only in Southern Africa. Former chairman Raymond Ackerman is seen as one of the gurus of South African food retailing and had seen an outside approach coming. Well, they were looking at South Africa for about a year. We were one of the people they spoke to, plus the other retail chains. We were expecting it. I'm not particularly happy about it personally, but that's a selfish attitude because we're going to have to fight even harder than we've had to fight to build our company. But I think it's a good, for the, good for the country. And indeed, Walmart's advance has accelerated the streamlining of Pick and Pay's own business. We, we've always said to ourselves that we want to be world class long before Walmart came in. But there's no question when there's a threat like this, um, we, we, we're working very actively on getting our distribution better than it was with central warehousing, which we had planned. We're now advancing it. And uh, we're doing a lot of things that we possibly would have waited for a couple of years. It's not only the big players that will be affected and who'll change their strategies. Cape Union Mart has 100 stores in South Africa selling general clothing and camping goods. Walmart is very strong in those areas. So, Walmart will be the lowest cost producer or importer. There's no question about that. We're not going to play in that space. We're going to move up the technical ladder. We're going to try and enhance our products with greater added value, greater technical features, and hopefully use our smallness to be able to carve out a particular niche in the market. That's what we're going to do. That's survival. The trade unions aren't happy with Walmart entering the South African market. The Congress of South African Trade Unions says that they're very concerned not just from the workers' point of view, but also about Walmart's procurement policies and its effects on local manufacturers. On the food side, where Walmart, MassMart is not that powerful, um, very little food is imported into this country. Um, I don't see that changing under Walmart's control. On the, on the general merchandise apparel side, I think people have conveniently maybe forgotten that the major part of what Walmart sells and what MassMart sells is imported already. You know, they always say that what made America great were the two words, you're fired. That doesn't apply in South Africa. In South Africa, it's a much more caring community. I think the unions have got to change their attitude and Walmart's have got, have got to change theirs when they come here, and I believe Walmart are flexible enough, and they've changed their attitude in quite a few countries towards unions. They're not just anti-union. But how great a prize is MassMart's portfolio of shops outside Africa for Walmart in the short term? MassMart is 92% South Africa and 8% in the rest of Africa. I have no doubt that Walmart did not buy MassMart for the 8%. The first target is the 92%. And there are huge opportunities for them to, to grow their business in South Africa in various fields. The 8% to me is the cherry on top of the tree. 
Although the rest of Africa has great growth potential, problems of infrastructure, distribution and the supply chain will take some time and money to sort out. Africa is not for sissies. Um, it's a very interesting business environment and um, certainly there are great opportunities and there are great threats as well. It is difficult. Uh, there's a lot of catch-up to be done in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of having access to trained staff to uh, work in one's businesses. There's a lot of really hard work to be done. But we believe that the rewards, potential rewards, outweigh the risks and certainly compensate sufficiently for the effort. We must get to make sure that our, our leaders, our African leaders, behave in the right way to attract, to attract the world. And a lot of them are. I believe the, the potential in, in Southern Africa and Africa is enormous with the mineral wealth, the number of people who desperately need modern marketing and modern methods and modern manufacture. Investment in the retail sector in the rest of Africa is likely to gravitate towards where the money is, whether it's oil or gold or minerals or diamonds. That's where you'll find the consumers with the biggest spending power. In many, many parts of Africa, there are, there's, there are pockets of wealth spending money, generally in the, um, in the capital cities or capital city and major, let's call it industrial or um, um, commercial centers of the countries um, in Africa, where you have government and of course you have a lot of NGOs, non-government people. And that's where the pockets of wealth are. In the meantime, the workers at MassMart in South Africa are likely to be very happy with the Walmart deal. In one of the most successful black economic structure schemes, each employee was given free share options three or four years ago. Walmart's offer of $2.4 billion for just over half of the business means that if the workers exercise their options, they will make a profit of 200% something Walmart is hoping that Africa's retail potential will eventually do for them.